What up? This is Robert from yaymath.org. We are in the YouTube recording studios in sunny Los Angeles, California. And today we're going to be talking about how to solve inequalities, right? So they're no longer equations as in equals, they're not equal, all right? And there's some specific rules associated with them. Rather than memorize the rules though, which I hate, I totally hate memorizing rules, um, I want to talk to you as a person and just try to make some logical sense with you, if that's possible, all right? Let's start with one inequality, that. True or false is two less than six. Hopefully now you know that it's true, okay? Based on what we talked about with our balance scale, okay, clearly this isn't balanced, but it's true. This is a true statement. If I were to add stuff to both sides, would that continue to be true? Let's find out. Let's say I add three here and add three here. The result would be five less than nine. Still true? Yes. So if you have an inequality and you add stuff to both sides or subtract stuff to both sides, it's still true. That's kind of awesome, right? Um, because the rule still applies from the equations. What if you were to divide stuff on both sides? Let's try that. All right, two is less than six, true statement, we know it. Let's divide two on both sides. Boom and boom. Let's find out, let's find out. Two divided by two, one. Six over two, three. Is that true? Yes, it is. One is less than three. All right, so we can multiply, we can subtract. We can divide and all that stuff, but there is one exception, and I'm going to show it to you. Put the exception over here in the box. Let's go two less than six. I'm going to multiply both sides by negative one. If you multiply by negative one, let's see what happens. Here we got negative two. Here we got negative six. Let's put it in, maybe in blue, because it's questionable. La, 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 la. Is that true? Is negative two less than negative six? Like on the number line, less than means to the left. Let's actually look at it. Here's zero. Here's negative two. Here's negative six. Which one's smaller? Which one's to the left? Indeed, it's negative six. So that entailed a sign switch, and that makes it greater. Negative two is bigger, is larger, large, and in charge compared to negative six. So in the books, what they do is that they say, oh, when you multiply both sides by a negative, or when you divide both sides by a negative, which is sort of the same function, you have to switch the inequality. And I can hear the students' voices right now. What happens when you multiply both sides by a negative? You switch the sign. And then I'm like, why? Crickets. And they never understand why you have to switch the sign. And here's why in, in full studio lighting. The reason why is that when you multiply by a negative, now this negative six, or it used to be positive six over here, flipped over there, and now it's to the left of negative two. Whereas before, it was to the right of two, all right? I hope that makes sense. Before six was out here, to the right of two, okay? When you make both negative, the negative six goes to the left. It like went all the way around over there. And now it's smaller and the negative two is bigger. I just wanted you to see that so that you actually like see it as a logic, an act of being logical, okay? I'll walk over here. <laughs> All right. Me, 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 me. Stay with it, easel. All right. Oh, I have a freaking towel down there. Okay. <laughs> That's like a Cinderella throw. Boom! I'm done cleaning these floors. Not fair. So, 3x plus 1, greater than 22. All right. All the rules apply except multiplying and dividing by negative. So we can just burn through these, subtract one on both sides, 
you're a boss, you're a champion, 21, x is greater than 7. No problem. Let's try some more. Negative 3, I'm going to do the same problem, plus 1, greater than 22. You'll notice it's the same exact thingamabobbers, with the exception of I made this 3 negative. But we'll go through process again, take it like a boss, minus 1, minus 1, we get negative 3, x greater than 21, right? And it happens to the best of us. Divide both sides by negative, divide both sides by negative, negative 3 divided by itself goes to 1, x, 21 divided by negative 3 is negative 7, and don't forget to switch the sign based on the rule we just did. Dividing by a negative on both sides means flip the inequality sign around. All right, same thing. How do we get x by itself? Divide both sides by negative 2. Gone. This is x. This is negative 5. Did we divide both sides by negative? We do, so we flip. Okay. And many times, let's not be intimidated, this means negative 5 is less than x, meaning negative 5 is smaller than whatever x is. And if negative 5 is smaller than what x is, that would mean that our friend x is bigger. It's actually on the open side of the Pac-Man, of the, like, the bigger. This is the bigger side. This is the smaller side. So that means x is opening up to the larger thing. So if I wanted to write x over here, if I wanted to write negative 5 over here, and we acknowledge that if negative 5 is small and x is big, that means x is bigger than negative 5. I have some fans in the windows watching some math education. Yay math to you! Check us out. It's a soundproof studio. I don't know why I'm saying that. Uh, they probably just got afraid of me pointing at them. <laughs> uh, but I was smiling. Uh, over two. All right, this one's weird, right? Fraction, x on both sides. So we need to work on getting x by itself. So again, let's follow the rules. Restore and rebalance. Do whatever we can to both sides as long as it's the same and we're following the rules to get the x to be isolated and thus solved. All right? This is fun. I'm like sort of hanging out right here. There is a, there's this magic dark darkness back there. It sort of scared me. Times two on both sides to cancel the fraction. Sorry if you, if that gave it away. Divide it. Those go. And we got 2x less than or equal to. Come on, easily. Stay with it. Okay. What should we do to both sides to get x by itself? Well, we have x on both sides of the equation. I would love to get it on the left. And if you love to get it on the left, you just add it to both sides here. Cancels. See, the idea is to do the opposite math. Minus x plus x, this is the opposite function that thus cancels it, all right? So then you get 2x plus x, 2 of something plus 1 of that same thing results in 3 of that same thing. Less than or equal to, this is 3. You'll notice we didn't change the inequality just because we added to both sides. Only when you multiply or divide both sides by something do you flip the sign. I think that makes sense to you. x is less than or equal to 1, which is a very outlandish statement to say because I'm just feeling people through the internets. Let's go x minus 3 over 2. All right, solve for x. What, would, what values of x would work in this equation? All right. Well, what we can do if we want to get rid of fractions is we can multiply both sides by something. Some people say multiply both sides by 2, which would cancel this. And I get that. However, if we multiply by so both sides by 2 over here, the 4 wouldn't completely cancel away. So we have to come up with the number, a number, the best number, that we can multiply on both sides to cancel both fractions. Do you know what that number is? This is sort of like little Einstein's when I watch it with my daughter. It's like, do you know where the mountaintop is? That's right! <laughs> and baby just sits there watching like this. She just like loves, she's mesmerized by it, but she's not saying like, it's a round back, or she's not interacting. I imagine you're not either. 
So I'm like, do you know what that number is? Awkward blinks. That's what they do. Yes, it's four. Well done. <laughs> Playing the part. Times four. There we go. Now, yes, indeed, these go. And now four and two cancel. Two goes into four twice. Very important. The two affects everything in here. So we are going to write out what we have. 2x minus 6. Pause for a second, and I wonder if you start to see something off about this problem. Let's find out. 2 hits both the x and the negative 3. So 2 times x is x. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. Do you see it yet? Do you see something weird with this problem? Let's continue to do stuff to both sides, such as adding 6, adding 6. Whatever we do to one side, we do the other. Gown and gown. And we're left with 2x is bigger than 2x. All right, I'm going to step on the gas a little harder. Is it possible for 2 times a number to be greater than 2 times that same number? Is it possible? Right, yeah. My boy Zach just nodded his head, no. <laughs> well done, man. Good job. <laughs> I still owe you those proofs, by the way. Yeah. The first day we met, it's like, I need to know geometry proofs. That was awesome, dude. <laughs> I haven't forgotten, man. I'm going to hit you to geometry proofs. Just as a personal challenge. Check it out. Even more straightforward. X greater than X. Is it possible for a number to be bigger than itself? Like 4 greater than 4? No. It's not possible for a number to be greater than itself. So the question is, what value or values of x will make this inequality work? The answer is that there is no answer. No solution. Now that's back in style. <laughs> Last thing we're going to do is uh, just some uh, wordsmithing. I want to make sure we understand what this means which inequality that is, which inequality that is, okay? At least and at most. So if I said a number is at most, or so just go here, at least. A number is at least 10. A number is at least 10. This throws people sometimes. Let's try it. If a number is at least 10, we have to think about, as humans, what at least means, all right? At least means, well, I have at least $10 in my pocket, lucky for me. So at least $10 in my pocket would mean 10 or 11 or 12. That's what at least means. So if I'm thinking 10 or 11 or 12 or 13, is that making x larger or smaller? Right, it's making it larger. So at least means greater than which is weird at first. I remember learning this. Isn't that weird? Like, at least you think small. At least you think small. But when you're saying a number is greater than 10, excuse me, um, x is at least 10. That would be what I'm trying to say. To say that x is at least 10 means x is greater than 10. So don't let this confuse you. Same with at most 10. Oh, I missed something. At least 10 means 10 or 11 or 12, right? If we're saying 10 or 11 or 12, at least 10, then we have to say or equal to. Okay, that means at least 10. Same with at most 10. You can do that here. If you're at most 10, that means you're 8 or 9 or 10. So if you're 8 or 9 or 10, you're smaller, but also possible to be 10 as well. All right, two more. No more than and no less than. No more than and no less than. These are, they put these on the tests a lot. No more than, no less than, them. So x is no more than 10. x is no less than 10. Let's try that. No more than 10, no more than 10. Meaning you can be 10, but you can't be more than it. So if you could be 10, but not more than it, that means you could be Six, seven, eight, nine, or ten. No more than it means it's okay. So it's like the the bus will fit no more than ten people. The bus will fit no more than ten people, meaning the number of people on the bus can be up to ten, but not including it. So smaller than ten. Or you could say 
We don't get the special discount at the restaurant for no less than 10 people. No less than 10 people. So not less than 10, right? You can be 10, but just not less than 10, all right? Meaning you have to be 10 or more. No less than 10. This is definitely going to be not less. This is definitely going to be not less. You could be 10, right? Which is not less than 10. No, oh, wait, wait. No less than 10. I'm getting confused. No less than 10 means 10's okay, but not 9.9. .9. Yeah, we're good. We're good. Yeah, I'm doing this stuff too, right? We're in the same boat, right? I'm a person just trying to make sense of this stuff. All right? You gotta we got to close the distance between like teaching it and learning it, right? We're all doing it at the same time, both simultaneously, right? Right now it's my turn and your turn at the same time. Overlap. All right? So, uh, great. Thank you for that, and I hope this helped you. Yay, math. Peace. See you next time.